Desmos is a piece of graphing software and it's pretty easy to use. Like I've seen a lot and um, this is right at the top. So for those of you who are absolute novices, you've got a keyboard down here. You don't have to use it. You can just use your regular keyboard. You might type Y equals X, uh, say, squared. There you go. So there's the familiar parallel that you know and love. For those of you who are going to start to become more familiar with this, and I suggest that's all of you, um, if you're using a keyboard, on your keyboard, uh, yeah, that's right, on, your, on the 6 button, you'll see this little symbol there, uh, it's, got, <laughs> it's actual technical name is the hat, so if you press the hat, nothing will appear on your thing, but if you then press 2, it will become the index, it'll become the power. Okay. So there's y equals x squared, uh, that way you can do your um, exponents nice and quickly. You can change that really easily, you can make a y equals x cubed just as, just as quickly. You can zoom in nice and close, do whatever you want. Now why we're looking at this is because uh, we're starting, or rather we're continuing on simultaneous equations. And you remember, when you solve these things, for example, let's have a look at this one here. I'm going to write it down because it's about to disappear. Uh, 2x plus 3y equals 16. I'm going to get this one. Uh, 2x plus 7y equals 24. Okay? One of the lovely things that I like about Desmos is that it will accept the way that you input equations almost any way that you like. So if we delete this, uh, let's go. So 2x plus 3y equals, what's it equal to? 16. Um, all you have to do is press enter on your keyboard and then you can write in as many functions or things that you like. So I can go, uh, the next one, 2x plus 7y equals, uh, what is it equal to, 20, 24? Thanks. Okay, now you can see on my view, I don't have it, you just have to move back out. But you can see very nice and clearly, and they even color code things for you, right? That point of intersection over there, and if you click on it, or you even mouse over it, you'll see the coordinates. This tells you that the solution will be x equals 5, y equals 2. Okay? And you may well have already done this question this morning and you're like, oh, I remember this one. And it's quite easy to see. Okay? Now, the reason why I'm highlighting this is because we said this morning we're going to move on from pairs of linear equations. So we had a look at when you've got three. We're also going to move on from linear equations. So just have a look at question three at the moment, which is one of the ones that I skipped. Uh, the one I want us to focus on first is 3e. So 3e looks like this x minus y equals 2, x, y equals 15. Now just pause for a second, don't type anything yet. I just want you to look at those equations for a brief moment. And I want you to think about, oh, hold on, what, what does this mean? You're going to get some values out of this when you solve, but what do those values signify? x minus y equals 2. I think we can get a rough idea of what that looks like. There are no powers, there's no division, so this is another straight line just like you've seen before xy equals 15. I'll admit, it's in a form that's not so familiar to you, but if I divide through by x... Does anyone recognize it now? What is this? It has a name, what's it called? It's a hyperbola, very good, okay? So a hyperbola is a curious shape, it's curved, it's not linear. So when we find points of intersection, let's have a look at what happens. So you can get rid of these if you like. Uh, or alternatively, if you've got them there and maybe you want to just like hide things because you want to not make them disappear, you can actually click over here on the left on those colored icons like this and they'll stay there but they won't be shown, okay? So I don't want them. I'm going to graph each of these one at a time, x minus y equals 2 and x, y equals 15. And then zoom out appropriately. Okay. So when you're having a look at this, right? Let's actually fix, it might be easier if I do that. Okay. When you have a look at this, right? You can zoom and you can pan and do whatever you like. There isn't just one solution. Let's see if it'll do it. If you click on one of those points of intersection, it will actually give you the coordinates, right? So that one over there, five comma three, that's an X value and a Y value, right? So X equals five, y equals 3. That's one of the solutions. And if you come back down to the bottom left hand corner, you can do the same thing. Okay. 
and here's your pair of solutions. Okay? Now, when you have a look at the question, all you're being asked to do is to solve. You do not have to have a picture or anything like that drawn. Uh, certainly, it'd be difficult to do this accurately enough that you could just read it like, oh, yes, of course that's 5-3. Okay? Don't expect that. However, two things. Number one, I'm going to encourage you as much as possible, even if you don't draw this, to think it, right? Now, we haven't worked that much with hyperbola so far, but we're going to do it increasingly. I should be able to say, oh, 15 on x, it's gonna have this part over here, and this part over here. x minus y equals two. I could rewrite that as minus y equals two minus x, which means y equals x minus two. Okay, I roughly know where that's going. Of course, I'm going to expect two points of intersection so there should be two solutions. Okay, does that make sense? And you can do the same thing for all of these. I'm going to encourage you to think about, okay, let's have a look at, uh, let's look at part C. Have a look at that one there. Y equals 3x squared and Y equals 4x minus x squared. Now, I'm not expecting you to have precision. I just want you to think. Do you have a picture of Y equals 3x squared in your head? Can you imagine it? You see what it's doing? You see what that 3 has an effect on the whole thing? Okay, 4x minus x squared. That's a little bit trickier, but you can factorize that fairly straightforward in your head, right? 4x minus x squared. What's the common factor? Okay, do you have a picture for that in your head? Okay, even just a rough one. Okay, now I'm going to encourage you to have your, your textbook there and Desmos open in the other window so that you can do this. You can say, all right, I think I know what it looks like. y equals 3x squared. Good. And then what did we just say? Uh, y equals 4x minus x squared. Okay. Does it somewhat match that picture you had in your mind before? And do you see, oh, yeah, I, I would expect that there are going to be two solutions. This point of intersection here at the origin, and then this one up here that is somewhere in the first quadrant up there in the top right. So I'm not going to ask you to draw any of these. However, as you look through, and I'm going to write these up shortly, um, question three, without actually doing the graph, have a look at part G. This one here, sorry, it's not very helpful. Look at part G. What's that guy? What is that? That is a circle. Its center is at the origin, and its radius will be the square root of 34, okay? Which is a little bit less than six, okay? Now, this guy, less familiar, and you're not expected to know. You can solve this algebraically, because when you have a look at this and this, you remember how I told you before? Oh, some questions, they just look so nice and neat. They're almost begging for you to use a particular method. What is this question begging you to do? Factorizing is important. But remember what you're trying to do again? You're trying to solve simultaneously. Look, I see a minus y squared here. I see a plus y squared there. I think the way they're trying to nudge me is to do elimination, right? Let's just quickly do it right now. If you add left-hand side and right-hand side for both of them, what do you get, le get left with on the left? What do you get left with on the right? Yeah? So you're like, oh, okay, yes. Now at this point, remember, it's something being squared. And you can square negative numbers and that's fine. Both of them are going to be solutions. Okay? So you can go ahead, you can put those back in to get y values, even if you don't know what this thing is. Okay? Now I'll tell you right now, just like, uh, let's go back. How far do I have to go back? Really far. Oh, there we go. Let's do that. Just like this guy was a hyperbola, right? and you can see where its asymptotes are if you kind of they're kind of implied on the um, coordinate axes. Okay. That x squared minus y squared thing has a remarkably similar shape, but I'll let you discover that when you go and have a play with it. Okay. 